Let's begin and continue with our quest of Hilchas Purim. Yesterday we started a little bit about the um, halachas of Mishlach Manus. So today we're going to continue. Yesterday we said there is a famous machloikas, he said there's like a machloikas between the Heilige Trumas Hadeshen and the Monas Levi, whether a Mishlach Makabitz, whether or not a person uh, is doing the Shlach Manus for the sake of to be Marbish on the Reyes, or he's doing it to be uh, t- to be married, co- so he suda, and we said there are common nafkaminas in that yesoid. We're not going to go through many more of the nafkaminas, but there are many nafkaminas, nafkaminas between them. Anyway, we paskin like both, Rabbi Zilobach told me anyway, so we paskin like both, so there's no major nafkaminas that Allah Chalamaisa. Now it's interesting, why don't we make a bracha on Mishlach Monis? So we said yesterday that the Shachianu that we hear on the Yom HaPurim, on the day, not the night before, on the day, the Shachianu that you hear have kavona, that it should be going on all the mitzvahs hayoyim, because all the mitzvahs hayoyim betzim don't have a bracha, for example, Mishlach Monis, Matonis, Evonim, Vachulei, therefore you should have kavona during the Shachianu. But why taka do we not make a bracha? Why is this different to every other mitzvah that has a bracha to it over here? So number one, the Rabbi Shlomo Zalman brings over here, and that is if one of the Yisoydus of Shlachmonis is to be Marbereis, it's, you know, I love you, I care for you, I want to give you something, so it sort of detracts from the whole thing when you have to make a bracha. You, you have to make a bracha, right? So you have to say to him, oh, hold on a minute, no. You have to say, hold on a minute, I need to make a bracha, right? So he'll be like, oh, I thought you loved me, I thought you cared about me, you're just using me as a vehicle to get oil in my and do a mitzvah, it's not beseda. As I used to go with Zalman, it's the same tshuva brought down in the tshuva van Hagas, also for Moshe Sturmach as well. There's other things as well, it could be at the Mikro Kodesh, actually, the of C.P. Sach Frank, that's all. So he brings down that it's a mitzvah ben Adam Mechavei, we don't make brachas on Mitzvah ben Adam Lechaveyo, you give someone a good morning. It's a Kvaldiga mitzvah, you make him feel good, you make him feel geschmack, he feels love, you make a bracha on that. Again, it detracts from the whole thing. And of course, we've got the famous Rashma and Hilchas Staka that we mentioned many times, which is that a person may not accept it. And if you don't accept it, then it's going to be a bracha of a Tola Lema Freya. Again? What do you mean there's no Sheikh? Of course there's a Sheikh for Shlach Manas. There is. Mishlach Manas Ishlaveyo. That means you give to one person Monois, two things. And therefore, at least on the first one, but the first one you yaitza, right? Second one in the Chalami, I hear. But the first one you should be yaitza. Now, Zrizi Magdim in the Mitzvahs means that you should try to make this Mitzvah as early as possible. In fact, with Eliyashu Zatzal brought down, you shouldn't eat before being Makaim the Mitzvah. Right? I was always naive. this was going back when I could, when I'd have a Nate on Purim morning, and I would bring Shlachmanas down to shul, so that straight after davening, I would give someone number one to be kind of the mitzvahs, reason of the mitzvahs, and number two that I can go home and have breakfast, which is also very gishmak because you want to get you want to get started with the avodas hayoyim avada, right? So you need to eat a bistle before. So that's, that's what I would do. The most the post can bring down. We're not worried. People are generally the chat is the post can say you're right. We're normally worried that you can't eat before doing a mitzvah because you may forget to do the mitzvah. But over here we're not worried. Why are we not worried? Because the guy's going to come knock on your door and give you shlach Ah, it's going to remind you. The main of the people are oisik in the yoyim of shlach so therefore we're not worried that a person may forget. And that's why you are allowed lemaisa to have breakfast before. But again, zrizim make them in the mitzvahs. Chapara in the mitzvah early per morning and give as early as you can. Yes? Oh, you have to give it when you're drunk, Avada, why not? Because I was Das, you don't need Das, well, I was Kenyan, it's, your word. it's all these Shailas. If the person is Koinerit, there's a Das HaMakna, if you have a if you have das to be makna to somebody else, if, if you're drunk, it's a good shot. But I might say, once he's taking it, he had a kinyan mishicha. Once he had a kinyan mishicha, mamele avada, he's yoytza, because he got it. So once he got it, then you're okay. What if he's drunk too? If he's drunk too? It's a good, once he's the mishicha, my nafka mina. Vaita. Um, do, you, can you, do you have to, can you give the shlach monis yourself? Are you allowed to give it yourself? What's the problem? The Ksav Sofa says that you should give it through somebody else. Because what does it say? Mishloyach monois. How does the art scroll probably translate that as? To send monois. To send it means you don't give it yourself, you give it through somebody else. Right? It's like if you want to send someone a gift, it's much more gishmak that a delivery man comes in and gives a fancy gift rather than bringing it yourself. Right? It's a more chash of a You should dafka give it through somebody else. Give it to somebody to give to him. Right? The person can say, we're not so makbid in that. It's okay, you can give it to yourself. Again, but the makbidim on the mitzvah hold that at least one of the shlach monas that you give, give to somebody else to give to the person, the recipient in that case. But Allah you do not need a shliach to give shlach monas. The Rambam says, 
the more shlach monas you give, how is them a shabbat? The Aruch Hashulcha brings this Rambam alocha lemaisa, but just uh, calm down with that one because the Rambam is also going to tell us that as much money you spend on shlach monas, you also have to give matanas evyonim. So yeah, don't be mar- you can be mar about how is them a shabbat and skavaldi, but don't worry. On the other side of the fence, you're going to have to give matanas evyonim in that case over there. Right? Let's quickly go through the famous things. You have to give two items to one person, like the Gemara tells us very clearly in the Gila, Paskan and Shulchan Aruch. It's also got to be something that's roy to eat. In other words, you should give him a piece of meat that's cooked as opposed to a raw piece of meat in that case. And it should be something that's roy to eat. It also should be mechubad. The Primagodim says you should give shlach monas according to the person that's receiving it. So in other words, to give something shvach to a person that's very choshev is probably a shaylef. to the Primagodim says, the more choshev the person, Obviously, the better it should be, and it should be two, which can be two of the same pieces. This we all know. You can give two pieces of chicken, you can give two wafers, but etzem, same bracha, yes, we all know that you can give two things that are the same bracha, that's no problem whatsoever. They don't even have to have the same time. There are those that say that should have two different timing, but it's good enough to have two choshava pieces to one person, even if they're the same. A drink is considered to be a min. So if you give a food and a drink, a drink is also considered to be a min and therefore that's going to be good enough. What if you give a whole bunch of jelly beans or if you give a whole bunch of nuts or chocolate, little small little things. You give a whole bunch of small little things that's considered to be one min and therefore it's not considered to be two minim. I asked Rabbi Zulobach, a bunch of different shaylas. I said, what happens if you give someone, he wants to give his chaveira, he wants to give his friend, he's got some cereal, he bought the cocoa pebbles and he's got these that belong to him. His cocoa pebbles, right? What is it? Cocoa Pebbles. Moish, you know exactly what Cocoa Pebbles are. Come on. Every English guy wants to have a Cocoa Pebbles, right? It's schmuck. So, Weetabix. Ah, oh, you buy some Weetabix. Enjoy Weetabix? Well, you'll keep your Cocoa Pebbles? <laughs> anyway, so Asher wants to know if on the morning of Purim, he could take a bowl of cereal, put some milk in it, give it to his friend and say, here you go, Shlach Monas, are you Yaitza? So Bizulabach told me no. You're not Yaitza. That's one thing. It's eaten together. It's made to be eaten together. It's not made to be eaten separately. I've you can, but it's not made to be in the mail. It's one min. So I said, Rebbe, what's the din if you give someone a meat sandwich? Right? You give them a baguette with stuffed with meat, right? American style. Yeah. A good pastrami sandwich. You go to Essen, get a, a fat sandwich, a fat pastrami, right? Corn beef, whatever. Uh, you know what I'm talking about? With the coleslaw on the side. No? Uh, no coleslaw on the side? You know there were people that used to go to Essen just for the coleslaw? <laughs> okay. Anyway. <laughs> the pickles. American pickles. Anyway, so uh, where were we? So Rabbi Zulobak told me, there you eat, sir. There you eat two minutes. When you give someone a meat sandwich, he told me there's no problem you eat, Rabbi said there's so many shilas over here. I have an interesting shilas, which I'm not even going to answer, but something for the only to think about. Rav Shaman Zetzal always used to say, before you close the Gemara, Leave off with a shiloh. Something to think about while you're munching on the schnitzel. So just imagine if you give someone a piece of hard cheese and a piece of meat. So now, what's he going to do? If he has the meat, he has to eat six hours for the cheese. If he has a piece of real hard cheese, he has to eat six hours for the meat. So he can't really eat them together. He could, maybe he can't even on Purim if you give them to him an hour before shkia. Like, how does it work? Or you yaitza, all of those shilohs of shlachmanis over there. What if you give someone a hachsha that they don't eat? Right? It's very common, right? A lot of people in Eretz Yisrael, it's a big problem. You come to Eretz Yisrael, you think, mm, everything's kosher. It's got Hebrew writing on it. So you go to the shop and you buy these shlachmanis, right? Ready made, fancy, very expensive, waste of time shlachmanis, right? And you give them to, you know, to everybody because every Rebbe is so excited to have those Gewaldig wafers, it's mamish Gewaldig. I go upon him, you give it over there, you give that shlacham on this, right? And, um, and it's a, it's a shvach haksha, it's a haksha that he doesn't eat. Lailen is such a thing, right? Is he, are you yait to shlacham on this if the guy can't eat it because he doesn't eat the haksha? Right? All of those sorts of titles. What if he's on a diet? He's on a diet, he doesn't eat all that stuff. So, Maisa, I can't even eat it for the suda. Uh, what type of race is this? You love me? You love me? You're gonna give me sugar? What type of love is that? Anyway, <laughs> let's move on. Rabbi, so there's too many shilas. There's a Mordechai Ben Ishchai. Ben, you know this Ben Ishchai. Balpe. Okay, you know the Ben Ishchai, right? You know the Ben Ishchai. It's a Mordechai Ben Ishchai. The Ben Ishchai wants to taina that most of us are not yaitzav shlachmanes. Why not? Why not? You know the Ben Ishchai, right? The Ben Ishchai says like this. Mordechai Ben Ishchai. He says like this. He says, if you take a kli, we all know that Hilchas HaFashas Chala. If you forgot to be Mafish Chala while it was a dough, 
you're allowed to do it even after you bake it. So what do you do? You have to do what we call, the Mishnah brings down in Mishnah Tzachala, Alidei Tziruf. That means you put it into a kli, put it into a box, into a bag, wrap it in a towel, something similar to that. The mail, it's all mitzdarev, it's all combined. Now you can be mafresh chala. Hilchas Yeredei, Hilchas Chala, Ayn Shom. Over here, Zuk the Benish Chai, if you take a bunch of things and put them in one container, so it's all one. So you're giving one thing to one person, not Yosef, Shlachmanis. The male, it's all serious. Look at the Benish Chai, you have to separate them. Don't give them in one clear. As I used to the Benish Chai, La Locha Lamaisa, right? He brings it down in the Sefer Torah Shema. You shouldn't put it in one thing. Lamaisa, Allah, Poiskim, from Rabbi Moshe, the Shevet Alevi, the Milchaz Yitzchak, and the Chachani. Everyone's mask him that there's no Shiloh whatsoever because the only reason you're giving a container is a way of transportation, a way of giving it over. I don't want it to be Mitztarev and Avadu Yoyotza in that case over there. So let's just move on because there are so many shaylas and we have to move on to the halachas of getting drunk. Matonis dev yoinim, it's a mitzvah of a sofim. The Gemara tells us, Megillah dev zayin of to give matonis le'ev yoinim. Right? That's what it is. That means I give two presents to two different aniim. It's very, very important to do that. The mitzvah, by the way, is bayoim, not balayla. Right? Now, by the way, bayoim means the yoim that you're chayiv in. That means if you're in your shalayim, that means your day is tesvav. And therefore, you'll have to make sure that your your um, on aniyim that are receiving the matonis lev yoinim are in the same day as you. So, for example, if you're outside in the street and there's a car going around, which is very common over here, and uh, the car is saying matonis lev yoinim, and you go, oh, this is gavaldi. So you pull out of your pocket whatever it's going to be, and you give it to them, but you don't have that they're in Bnei Brat, and they're giving it on your dollars, and you're a, you're a tesvov guy, that's a problem, and you're not going to be yaitza. So you have to be careful that the day that you're chayivin is the day that you, that whoever it is that's giving the matonis lev Yoinim is giving in on the day that you're chayvin. Now, here, Baruch Hashem, in the yeshiva, every single year, Baruch Hashem, I'm sorry to collect for a very, two very, very, very big Tamid Chachamim and Niim Mahadrin, Mina Mahadrin. These people, Mamish, are living by the breadline. They have Mamish nothing. And it's a Simcha Gedoyla. I don't send it myself, I send it with the Shliach. The Simcha Gedoyla that he tells me every year that this person has, he gives it to Mamish when he's about to start the Suda because we try to collect as late as possible to have as much as we can. The Simcha Gedoyla, you cannot imagine, he has epis for Yonta, for Purim, for Pesach even as well, it helps him, it's an unbelievable thing, so if anybody wants to, it's given on Tezvov of Adar here in Yerushalayim. Now, the shear, how much is the shear for giving Matanas Yedoyinu? Number one, you cannot use Maisa money, right? We know this famously from the Gemara, that you can't do any mitzvah that you're hired to do with Maisa money. So you cannot use Maisa money, but of course the extra you can use Maisa money for. So the minimum shear that you have to give, you give without Maisa money. Any extra you want to give, that you, cannot, that you can use Maisa money for. And again, as the Rambam said, whatever you spend on, on Shlachmonas, the equal, if not more, you should spend on Atonis Evyonim because it's Anim and they're waiting for this, as the Gemara tells us, when it comes to Purim. Al Koponim Lemaisa. What is the She? So, Chacham uh, Ovadia brought down that it's a mana falafel, right? Whatever it costs to give a mana falafel, right? falafel, that's good enough. Lemaisa asked Rabbi Zul Obach, what Lemaisa should the Bachem give? So he told me, Bishem Rav Yashiv is Shver and his father, Rabbi Shemim Zalman, that Be'erach Shiva Bachem should give somewhere between 20 and 30 shekel per Oni. So you're talking about somewhere between, you know, 40, 50 shekel, 60 shekel, again, depending on, you know, I guess it depends on what type of phone you have. I guess it depends what, how much you go out to eat and where you go out to eat and all these sorts of things obviously come into equation because these are mitzvahs and obviously we spend good money on mitzvahs over there. Moving on, Rabbi Sai. Moving on, Rabbi Sai. There's, there's a lot to go on, huh? That's a good question. If he gets the money on the day, yes. A check you can give him also, even though the mice of the bank is closed, because a check means an IOU, and that's good enough. Even if it'll process in two days. As long as he can use the money today, yeah. Yeah. Rabbi, so let's move on, because there's too many shyness for us to go through in the time that we have. Sudas Purim. Let's begin with Sudas Purim, because we've got to get the luck of getting drunk, damaging when you're drunk, davening when you're drunk, and all the shyness are traveling, which you didn't even get to yet as well. So Rabbi, so we have a lot to do. Number one, Rabbi, so we'll get to that. We'll get to the Asha. The Ramah brings down, Tafesh Tzadi Hey, very important Ramah. Before the Suda, make sure you learn something. As I state the Ramah, Right, even though we spoke uh, last time about the idea of learning between Mikra Megillah Aleph and Mikra Megillah Base, which some Sofis said, Muftuk Shur Ben Oilam Abba, the Ramah says that you should learn Epis a small amount. He says, open up a Sefer, listen to a Shir, whatever it is, do the Daf, go over the Sedra, whatever it is, and go and learn before the Suda. It's very, very important. Lahayudim Oisa Oira, Oira Zu. Torah, as I state the Ramah. And therefore, that's why, by the way, people learn, what do they learn on Purim? Everybody learns what? Everybody learns? 
Hello? Hilchas Pesach, Rabbi Yisai, Shloishim Yoyim Kodem Achag. Shloishim Yoyim Kodem Achag, we learn Hilchas Pesach. Okay? We, um, Rabbi Yisai, let's move on. Let's move on. The Zman of the Suda, we'll have to talk about a different time because now, this year, in Yerushalayim, it's Erev, Pe- Erev Shabbos. So Erev Shabbos, obviously, we have to talk about how to have a Suda in Erev Shabbos. We'll talk about it. Lechatchela, you have to have bread. A Suda requires washing and bread. Do you have to eat meat? So Rabbi Moshe brings down in Nugus Moshe, it's enough to have chicken. You don't have to have meat. It doesn't have to be basa. Abba Lekit Yosha brings from his Rebbe, the Trumas Hadashen, that says that chicken is not good enough. Moedim Vazmanim, Rabbi Moshe Shtambach has old tshuva about this as well, that Avadi, you have to eat flesh. Fleisch. That's a double portion as well in that case. Fleisch is meat, by the way. Yes. Um, let us move on. Aga, by the way, the Heilige Schlag Kudish. The Heilige Schlag Kudish brings down that every person on the Yom Purim has to have a machshava of of Torah, of Kabbalah, of Torah, Mamash, the Shlach Kodesh, like Simchas Torah. That is why you the Shlach Kodesh is important. By the way, there's an Issa Malacha on Purim. That means cutting your nails, if it wasn't an Erev Shabbos, is Be'etzim Osa. So if you're cutting your nails the covered Shabbos, that's okay. If you're cutting your nails time, is going to be a problem. Writing, doing laundry, all of these things on Purim Yom itself is generally Osa because there's an Issa Malacha on Purim. And as the Ramah brings down, anyone that does Malacha on Purim, Enoi Sim and Bracha Lailam, will not see Sim and Bracha from that actual work. Again, Erev Shabbos, obviously we're make up with certain things in Yerushalayim. Outside Yerushalayim, for example, it's a Thursday, you haven't got those at him. Rabbi, so let's finish off. Again, there's a lot to do. I just want to finish off today with one last horror, and that is the sugya of getting drunk. The Gemara in Megillah, Dav Zayin base famously tells us, all right, it's now fam- more famous, maybe a, a song, but it's Agav also with Gemara. Chayi ve'im ish le'besume b'poryu adol yada. right? That's the foolish song, Agav, it's a Gemara in, in Megillah, Dav Zayin base that there's a chiv, Lashon of chiv. As far as I know, the art school translates chiv as obligation. Right? As far as I know, that's what the art school says, that you are obligated to get completely plastered on Purim. How do we know this? Where does this come from? So look at the Gemara, Rabbi Isai. The Gemara brings chiv in Ishu chayiv to get drunk. What happens straight after the, after the Gemara says that? What's the next Gemara after that? So the Gemara brings a story about Rabbi and Rabbi Zeyra that had a Purim Suda, one with each other, and what happened was, Rabbi came, became very, 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 very drunk, and killed Reb Zeyra. Okay, so you look at the Marishah, Avade doesn't mean he killed the Mamash, but he became unconscious because he became so drunk. Okay, different cheetahs, we're not going into the Me'iri, says a very similar chat the Me'iri like the Marishah, but I'll upon him, as I state the Maisa in the Gemara. Now, came along the next year, and Rabbi said to Reb Zeyra, no, he came into the Purim Suda this year. Reb Zeyra says, ha, 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 no chance. Right, you're going to to a nace once because he had Tchir Samesa the year before. I don't know if I'm going to be Zoycha this time. Okay, beautiful, wonderful story. Rabbi Sai, Machloikis was showing him what's Pshat in the story. What's Pshat in Chazal telling us this story? Rabbeinu Ephraim wants the Taina. One of the showing him that the story came straight after Chayv Inish. Why? To show Lemaisa that we paskin like Rabba, not Chayv Inish. No, don't do it. Because look what happened over there. And Zug Rabbeinu Ephraim, the reason why the Gemara brings the story is to show us we don't paskin Chayv Inish. Yes, the Gemara said it, but Lemaisa, we don't do it. Because Allah and Lemaisa, look what happened over there, and there was Zoe Paschal Rabbeinu Ephraim, you shouldn't do it. Most Rishonim, the Rif, the Rosh, and the Tor hold, other Rabba Fakert. From the Gemara, what do we see? We see from the Gemara that we do Paschal that way. Because straight after Chayav Inish, the Gemara wrote a story that actually happened that way, which means they actually did it. And the Shulchan Aruch, Paschal's like Rav Rishonim, like the Rosh, and like every Rif and everybody else, Kedalkish Kodesh, Shalahilige Shulchan Aruch, the Maran. Therefore, we Paschal Chayav Inish Lemaisa. Okay? Now there are many explanations and we'll end with this and then we'll talk tomorrow exactly how to make the mitzvah, whether you need wine, whether you need whiskey, or whether it's scotch, I don't know. We'll talk about that. But I'll put him different sheet as I say in the post game. First of all, I have to mention to you the Heilige Satmaruv. The Heilige Satmaruv used to say, he used to say like this. He used to quote the Zayda, the Yismach Moshe, where the Zayda, every single Purim, used to say 24 new pshatim in Chayiv Inish. Every single year, would say in the Suda, 24 new pshatim in Chayvenish. Over the Yisrach Moshe ended over the Maisa Poshet Pshat Avadar as the Eka. As I said, the Heilige Satmaru B'Shem, the Zayda, the Yisrach Moshe. But there are different sheetahs, let's talk about them just for a minute. There's a Maral, the Maral wants the Taina, that if you, the, the Gematra of Oruhomon is, 
don't know, maybe some people are drunk already today. If you don't know the gematra between Aura Homan, which we know basically is the same thing as Baruch Mordechai, if you can't figure that out, Zukta Maral, which is 502, which Lamaisa means that you're drunk if you can't figure out that gematra. The Bach wants to say that if you confuse the order, Right? If you know the order between Baruch Matach and Aru Haman, if you mix up the order, then Avadah Yoyitza. Toysvus in Megillah brings you Shalmi. That says if you confuse the song, Sheshanas Yaakov. I don't know how many people know it even today. But if theoretically you know it and you confuse it, Toysvus will say you Shalmi, to Avadah Yoyitza the Mitzvah. Rabbi Sol Salanta Rabbi Yisai, which is also the Eilig Sfasemes. The Sfasemes writes, and Rabbi Sol Salanta Paskas this way, that there's no Chiv to get Adulo Yada. The pshat is, it's a ptor. That means, according to the Svasemes, according to the Pesor Salanta, there's a chiyah to drink and drink and drink and drink and drink and drink. Just when you reach Adolo Yoda, now you're part of the mitzvah. So according to the Svasemes, according to the Pesor Salanta, there's an Indian just to drink and drink and drink the whole time. But just when you get Adolo Yoda, now I'm part of the mitzvah. As I pass in the Right? Rabbeinu Avigda ala Torah. By the way, he was a Rishon. Rabbeinu Avigda ala Torah brings down the purpose of drinking a Purim is not for your own Simcha, it's to make other people happy. The Rambam brings down until you fall asleep. The Ramah brings it also. The Kolboy says just drink a little bit more than normal. And the Ramah says as well, drink a bit more than normal. Fall asleep like the Rambam and you're good in that case. There's a Bach also brings Rabbeinu Ephraim. You drink the amount that people sp- can't speak in front of a Melech. You're okay. The Chidah Brings another pshat. You can't differentiate what you're saying. But boys say many, many different pshatim. You know, when it comes to many mitzvahs, we don't look for colors. We want to be kind. The mitzvah mahadrin mina mahadrin, like every other mitzvah. This mitzvah is no different. And therefore, our vada, like the highly gesat maruv said, behind the sees of the the ikka is poshib pshat, and we go with poshib pshat. Tomorrow, beis Hashem, we'll talk about how to make and what to do about davening and about getting things damaged. Let's not have a wonderful day.